Hello, Internet. This is Lord Mad Dog, and we are playing From the Depths. Today, we're taking a look at my Nether designs, all the designs that we used during the Nether campaign, which never actually got finished, but oh well. So, fair warning, though. These designs were all designed with the idea of having a player control them. Now, I've gone over them and made a lot of AIs for the first one, though, not. But I've gone over and made AIs for them. They are not designed for aesthetics, they were designed for efficiency because it was limited to one unit in every battle. It was limited to player controlled units unless they were captured. So I had to make my units extremely efficient so they were not beautiful pieces of arts, they were extremely effective. And that's what the whole object was. So let's go ahead and jump into the first one. This was this little ugly thing was called the Basher. And it is now available on the Steam Workshop. If anybody wants it, I'm going to show it off a little bit. It is funky looking. It's, I wouldn't say it's by any means, a, like I said, no, no piece of artwork. But to show it off, we're going to go ahead and have it fight against the Plunderer. Which I think is more than, more than an equal battle for it. Because, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to show you its cost. It's 23k cost and it's completely player controlled. And the reason why I could not make this one AI controlled is because its design is designed to be played by the player using the mouse. Yes, that's one of the key features of the Basser if you remember that playthrough. So let's go ahead and test it against the Plunderer. Yes. Plunderer. Oh, wait, oh, it's funny. Okay. Duh. Okay, here we are. Now, as I said, this is all player, a very player controlled design, so I will be controlling it during this battle. And if Plunderer gets off a of free free hits on me, not a big deal. Now, one of the key functions of this is that it was capable of flying into the water. So I may showcase that off. Air. Ooh. Taking a big old plow down into the plunderer's side there. We took out, no, we didn't take out one of its guns yet. Yeah. There, we took out that gun. Let's take out this gun that's shooting at us right here. Ooh, that cram cannon got very... Well, it did actually hit us. It took off the missiles on, on it. Okay, let's take out this cram cannon now as well. Let's finish it. We're pretty much already defeated the plunder. I mean, the yeah, we have. Now, this is a godly... The plunder is a godly design worth and a lot of money, a lot of resources. Ooh, and it can get you pretty good. And that's why this design was all about being out of maneuverability. This one was when I played it, because it's all, yeah. Okay, well, I do believe that's pretty much the end of the plunderer. We've got it pretty much now, it's just finishing it off. We've disabled all of its weapons and taking it mostly out. Now. I should showcase the water, but it's the water that it doesn't move too fast in the water and it's not all that great, but it can go in the water and that is important for if you have massive missile spam or something else going on. Or you just mess up while you're flying and accidentally fly into the water. Okay. Like I'm going to do here on purpose. Nope. Well, uh, no. Not on purpose. I almost did it. Okay, so I'm just trying to now get the plunderer to its two damage to continue. Which should be very shortly, actually. Here, now I'll go ahead and just land in the water. There. You see, it can go into the water, and then it can slowly come out of the water. And go 10 meters per second in the water. And then fly right up and on out. That's a nice feature. Oh, all right, two damaged. All right, and that is 
the Basher. It's uh, just a nice little cute little design. It is fully capable of taking on almost all of the deep water guard by itself solo. So if you watched my series, I took on multiple enemies with it at a time. No problem. It's a beautifully designed, efficient use of resources. Totally kill everything with ease. If you like player controlled vessels, this one is one that'll take you a little bit to get used to the controlling it, but it is the pretty close to the only plane or air type uh, unit I've ever seen that lets the player really kind of feel like they're fighting in kind of a dogfight situation. Uh, there's a few others out there, but they just weren't quite this. This has that nice kind of old arcade fighter style. Uh, this with this one, except for it's got the turrets at turn, so it's not quite as come on straight on, and now it's more like point turret turn. So it's a really nice design. Let's jump on over to the next one, which will be the light st starlight. Yes. All right. This funky looking design is the starlight. Uh, it doesn't look the greatest. I mean, it's actually kind of cute in its own little bobbing way. You'll see when it's fighting. It's kind of cute as it bobs along. Now, this one I have was able to completely convert it to AI, and actually all the rest of the ones in the netter, I've converted them all to have AI. So I will not be controlling it during this while well, it's test flight against everything. Now, this one, like the last one, is very cheap. It's got it cost a little bit more. It's 36k instead of 32k resources. It is also capable of pretty much soloing the deep water guard, um, except for it's not player controlled, so there's not guarantee it's not it's all about on the AI, which I've done pretty good I think in creating a sustainable AI. So let's go ahead and test it against something that most people would have trouble with: the more. Yes, the more. If you have ever fought the more, you know it's not a pretty design. One of the ones that you really want to. Uh, have to fight. So let's go ahead and fight the more. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get off the there and I'll just watch it fly around. As it comes in over here. It's just shooting. It suits uh, 120 rounds per minute on both cannons each. It can shug off cram cannons pretty well, as you've just seen it get hit straight in the face and not do much damage. Now, it can have torque clips, which will suck if that happens. And we have done... How have we done damage-wise to the more? So far, we have not done too much. We haven't done too bad either. I think, oh, we've already wiped out one of the guns for the more. Here he's flying underneath, and it'll be flying around, and it'll just keep on shooting at the more from a distance. About, I think I have it set at 300 meters? It, oh, it's 300 meter attack runs, yes. So it flies like a um, airplane with the attack runs. Now, I wanted it to go around, but I just couldn't get it, the AI to really circle the enemy and I figured the attack runs actually work out better after a lot of testing because if it's circling it can actually get hit a little bit more than dodging underneath and not around and the more is already starting to sink it's folding out of the air Ooh, nice yeah You know, I should have turned off an avatar given resources that way, so if there's any healing, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have really happened. But I don't think there's been that much healing on that on this thing. Oh, just a direct hit to its last gun. Oh, that was well, not last gun, but really close to its last gun. It still does have cram cannons. A few cram cannons. As you can see, the most of the resources being used for the actual ammo, if you see over there in the little corner. Uh, oops, I'm sorry about that. There we go. Not for, okay. 
So it does have some ammo processors, so it will take a little bit of eat a little bit of am, uh, resources during combat, but now nah, it shouldn't use too much. Also, this is a clipless uh, weapon setup, so it, the chances of the torque being chopped off is not near as high. It also means that um, it relies more on your own ammo storage in the ship, but I have that all taken take into consideration. As you can see, I have 2,000 ammo on it, and I do have some ammo processors. Ooh. And down goes the more. There's not much left of this thing. Ooh, keeps on getting hit. Wow, I, I'm surprised the more actually can still hit me. I think it may have just, no, it didn't actually damage my detection systems. All right. There we are, the more is too damaged. Yes. And down goes the more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. It, it, it took a good bit to be able to be, be, have something that can beat godly designs for only 36k. And this can defeat, I've tried against all the godly designs, the Kraken, the paddle gun, and uh, plunder. I've tried to make and defeat them all pretty handily without taking too much damage. So there is that is the Starlight. If you like it, it is available in my. Uh, I'll have a link in the description to all my de workshop designs. Uh, as I said, they're not pretty, but they are definitely very effective. All right, so now let's go ahead and jump on over to the Ebon Star. All right, so here is the Ebon Star. Yes, the Ebon Star cost 264k with resources. And even though it is like the others, not the prettiest of designs, actually, it's kind of ugly, but I also really like it too. I mean, it kind of reminds me of a fat carrier or something. It's it, it, like maybe like a drone ship. When you'll see what I mean, what I mean is when it, when, it, when it lets down its giant laser to start shooting at things. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the Ebon Star again. Something. Uh, what would be fair to test it out against would be the White Flares. Whoops. Godlies, there we are. White Gut Fire's Judgment, which cost relatively the same amount of resources as it. And, yeah, that would be very fair to test it again. But, what would not be fair to test it against would be the Perforator, which cost like 480 some K worth of resources. Yeah, almost double it. But, you know what we're going to do? We are going to test it out against the Perforator. <laughs> Perforator. Here we go. Takes a while to load in. Now. Oh, I have it paused. My bad. <laughs> there we are. Now, the Perforator is one of the har harder designs. It's harder, the de from my experience, it's harder than any of the designs in the Onyx watch. And it's pretty almost equal to the Terawatt, which I think is the hardest design in the Lightning Hoods. Yes, that's it. And we are beginning our fight against the... This here? I'm keeping getting the Perforator's name. Now... Uh, the, the special thing about this is its AI control feature. Once it gets to a certain point, it starts to back up. And it stays at that specific range the whole time, which enables it to continuously shoot straight on at the enemy. And now my laser's missing a little bit there, you've seen that? And that's because this thing spams radar uh, missiles that cause your detections to go off a little bit. But it's not a big deal. I get right back on target after a few seconds. Ooh, uh, the missiles are just made through my laser defense systems. And the game froze because of it. Well, no, I didn't take much damage. Okay, I didn't think I would. It just, for some reason, stopped shooting for, stopped moving for a few moments. And once again, I think we just did massive damage or my computer just can't handle the fight. Uh, it should be easily able to handle this fight. 
All right, so this is the perforator. As you can see, I pretty much, my ship has almost already disabled the perforator. A perforator can be very, very, very dangerous. But, ah, well, as you can see, it's more or less already lost this fight. Oh, I do have a few great grab sites in my cannons. So that's what, that, I wonder if it'll knock it over. I was thinking about adding a lot more gram sites in my cannon just to be fun with this thing. Okay. But yeah, this is the Ebon Star. It has owned the perforator. Oh, there, there. There's the gram shots. They just went off. Oh, it didn't knock it out, though. Oh, I took some damage. My laser stopped shooting. And, um... I have all healing disabled on this thing, so it isn't going to heal. Ah, uh, well that sucks. That means this battle will take a little bit longer to finish. Uh, well, normally that doesn't happen, but you know, it, it, with, with, with that uh, per perforator cannon, it can, that, that perforator cannon, things can go bad, because it does pierce. And there is no way to defend against it. I have multiple redundant systems on my laser. I'm surprised it was able to do that. Ooh. And uh, a couple of them sh shots getting through. Oh, wow. This means this site's going to go on forever. And the perforator may actually end up actually winning. I'm surprised. That's like one out of 50 times worth of trying this has actually happened. But hey, that's... What happens sometimes? You get bad luck. Okay. There we go. Some of those things. You know, I should probably put some more of those in it. It could totally flip that thing upside down. That perforator's main cannon is actually doing a decent amount of damage. I am surprised. Really sucks, actually. I think I'm going to go down. Oh, well. There, I thought that it could easily take it, and it didn't take it. That was a uh, very dis dis disconcerting side affairs. Oh well, that happens. Uh, it can take it. Sometimes I guess it can't. Ah, uh, but that's that. Uh, let's go ahead and try again against the act, the the judgment, which is a fair fight against it for itself. Now the judgment it will handily wipe the floor without taking any damage against the judgment. So let's go ahead and destroy all vehicles and try this with the judgment. Ah oh, man. Well, it could still win the fight. It's just going to be a very very long fight. And that's not going to be any fun. And it's not, it's just for some stupid reason, it keeps on shooting at its sides and not shooting at the perforator's main cannon, which I don't understand why it's not doing that. But that's just the AI problem sometimes. I know, well, actually, I do know why. The, 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 the perforator has um, small ammo storages on the left and right sides of the corner to, as decoys. So that's what's going on, why it's not shooting at the perforator's main cannon. But, eh. Oh well. <sighs> I'm disappointed. But, that's how that happens sometimes. Destroy all vehicles. I'll destroy all vehicles. There we go, because I don't want to have to try to repair that thing. It'll take a while. Alright. Load vehicle. Ebon Star. Let it charge up for a few moments. Let its battery get full. Uh, okay, now let's destroy again because the missiles, those missiles were my own missiles doing massive damage against me. Let wait till everything gone. Load vehicle, Evan Star. Here we go. Now let's go ahead and take on the judgment. Honestly, it can take on the perforator. It just happened and didn't do it that time. I, I don't know. And I, to, to be fair, let it fail. It, as you can see, it can fail. But 
Here now it'll just wipe the floor with the the judgment. Let's go check out the judgment. As the laser just penetrates through oh and it got not the judgment got knocked into the water a little bit by the little gram shots from the cannon there's not that many in there there's only like three or four uh three i think three clips out of the like 80 18 clips that have the right grab shot but that's cute actually if i put all put like made them most of them grab shot that would really probably make this thing very efficient win 100 percent of the time hey eh? now why is the laser being a little bit wonky there okay And there goes the main cannon of the Judgment. So this design, the Ebon Star, is it's just finishing off. <laughs> that didn't take it very long to take out the Judgment, as you can see that. Okay, this design, I would say, is a mid to late game design. You'll easily have 250k uh, around halfway through the white flares. At least you should with the resources. You usually have about 100k with the resources when you finish off the deep water guard. At least I've always had about 100, 150. So yeah, that is it's so damaged now it doesn't it's getting hard to detect that's kind of weird and you might need a little bit better detection systems i'm not all that the detection systems came along after my time i've read the descriptions and i put them in there and i thought i did really good with the detection systems but i may not have Ooh, just ripping out the insides of this thing and yep that is the ebon star Ooh, <laughs> okay, definitely need to do some more of them grav rams. Uh, if, I, if I make more designs, I need more grav rams. That's cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the last design of the day, which is Noah's Ark. Yes, a cute, funny design, which well, I would consider a late game design. So let's go ahead and jump on over to that. <laughs> Unless you want to watch this get destroyed as it gets pummeled and turned around. <laughs> that is really cute. Alright, so there we are. It's below 80% below, uh, below health and sinking. And it's below the water line, so it's nicely not being seen. That's what's going on there. And there goes the judgment. I'm sad it didn't take out the perforator. It was so close, too, before its laser somehow got disabled. Uh, if I would have had repairing on, that wouldn't have happened. I would have easily repaired the damage and kept going, but I figured for this, I wanted to showcase it without repair. So. Yes. Let's go to the next one. So here we are with Noah's Ark. This is my fun design. It's not cheap. It's a close, I think it's a little bit over a million worth the resource, cost of resources. And it's just meant mostly um, for fun because I was getting bored with the Netter ca campaign because, well, um, it, it, it just, it, it got, after I, after I gained all the, re all the technologies and uh, just didn't have, any more real challenge except for well I had to build player based ships that could take on everything but the problem was is that I was having like 50 enemies in a battle and that's just not fun it was one piecemeal boring but it, you know it, if you watch it it got it got boring with player control at, at that point because I was fighting 200 space with 200 enemies at a time no 200 level enemies at a time I had like 50 60 different enemies in it so this was my solution a super fun design called Noah's Ark and it has rainbow laser thingies that spin well they are supposed to spin but the game freaks out every time they spin <laughs> yeah all right but it, it is powerful enough to defeat i think some of the end game design some of the i think the very end game so end game scarlet dawn godly uh the dark star i already showed it against the dark star let's go against the dire harvest it can defeat the dire harvest in like uh one out of every three no, like two out of every three. 
So it's not guaranteed it will defeat the Dire Harvest this time around, but it may. And I, it is fully AI controlled, so I will not be controlling it. And its object is to put it punch through the smoke, punch through the Dire Hard's uh, armor, and kill it. Let me change my camera to do a little bit. And actually, it's already pretty much disabled the Dire Harvard's main what? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Okay, I spoke too soon. Now, this a healing is not disabled on it, but I didn't give it any resources, so it cannot heal. But will it make a difference? Ooh, the Dire Harvest's cannons are shooting straight into the bottom of my ship. Now, if I were to take control of it here for a few seconds and just shoot out that main cannon, which anybody can do. <laughs> okay, that was a bit cheaty. <laughs> I mean, it, it guarantees the win, but it, it's actually not quite fair. Because <laughs> my detection system wasn't doing that. And, uh... It's still got a few little weapons shooting here in the corner. Why are my missiles, my lasers missing so bad? Oh, because we got extremely far away from each other. Well, my laser shouldn't be, well, it is the detection systems. Like I said, I'm not perfect with the detection systems. I thought I, thought I did really good with them, but I guess I didn't do as well as I thought I did. And this will be a long, long fight. Because both of them have an insane amount of... Re What's this thing cost? Uh, where's the resource cost on it? Uh, no, it doesn't tell you. It's just 27k volume. Wow. Okay. Oh, there it did some really good damage to it. Lost its particle cannons. Lost its main systems right there. Now comes in my super heavy duty missiles, which aren't actually making it through, surprisingly. They did make somewhat through, but not very well. Let's go see what the damage to the, damage to the uh, arc has been. It's actually gathered some resources from the, it's, it's damaging from to the thing there. It, oh, it minor damage to the outside, more or less. Wow, okay, so the Ark has gone through this without taking much damage at all. I'm surprised. If you have the resources to build it, I guess this thing could actually fight, take you all the way to the end game. <laughs> it just will be kind of long and boring because lasers get stuck on smoke, even with wave rod adjusters, which don't seem to work all that well. They do, actually, after some more testing, they do do work against uh, la wave rod adjusters. Do work against laser shields. But they do not seem to work against smoke, which doesn't make a lot of sense. They say they're supposed to work against smoke, but after a lot, a lot of testing, they don't work all that well against smoke. So I have this thing set up to, ooh, wow, it's shot straight through there. Continuously change its target a, bit, a little bit uh, instead of spending a long time on shooting in one specific spot, which means that the smoke will be less effective. But once the Dire Harvest actually goes into the water, it, it, if it's above 80% health once it goes into the water, it, then it'll take forever to kill the thing. Because <laughs> water does, does dis disable the, the lasers a little bit. Okay, I think the Dire Harvest is going into the water. It sank, more or less. So that is the high, I think that's pretty close to the highest level enemy in the game. Uh, so yeah, that this is definitely just handily beat it well with a tad bit of player help it handily beat it because i just wanted to destroy the lasers on the thing oh and it goes down sinky you go please tell me that you're below 80 percent health when you sink because otherwise this battle could take forever yet oh ai dead wow i did not expect that to happen wow i thought the ai on this thing was super super defended 
Okay. Three, two, four, five. Yeah, it'll take forever for it to tear apart. Now, let's go see about actual damage to this ship. Actually, no, we took no damage? Wow, okay, well, um, you're like, well, that's because it's repaired. Yeah, I didn't give it any resources. As you can see over there in the corner, all it has is 2,927 resources, and I didn't give it any. Uh, see, uh, it's disabled. Now it's enabled. Uh, okay? So, the only resources it used to repair itself was all that it got from killing the Dire Harvest. <laughs> so, this is a killer design, obviously. Well, it worked, that worked out way better than I thought it would be. I thought it would use most of that in resources cost for make, fixing up its own um, ammo because it has a decent amount of missiles to launch as well. And it, the ammo's are not, uh, the missiles are not replenishing themselves for some reason. Ah, that's weird. But yes, that is the Noah's Ark. And that's also the last of my nether designs for the, at this moment in time. Uh, I may continue the ne the Nether uh, campaign with the out without the player constrict restrictions just to be fun, but then I may not. I'm actually kind of getting bored of From the Depths now. Uh, I may move on to another game. Uh, someone suggested um, something Stellar Rift or Solar Rift or so. I have to look back into that. I hope you have enjoyed this episode of me playing. Oh no, of me showcasing off some of my designs for From the Depths. Lord Mad Dog, signing off.